What's the difference between Web3 and the Metaverse? Two terms that are generating a lot of hype right now are Web3, sometimes also called Web3.0, and the Metaverse. If you look at the coverage, you would be forgiven for thinking that they refer to exactly the same thing. However, although they're related in several important ways, they both describe different concepts. So let's take a look at what they are, where they differ, and where they overlap. In simple terms, Web3 is the decentralized internet built on distributed technologies like blockchain and decentralized autonomous organizations, rather than centralized on servers owned by individuals or corporations. The idea is that this will create a more democratized internet, so no single en entity will control the flow of information or will be able to pull the plug and kill a network simply because they own the hardware that is running on. In theory, the servers systems and networks will be owned by the users themselves who will have voting rights over what rules and regulations are in place and how they can be used. Why is it called Web3? Because it's thought that this is the next major evolution of the internet after the first World Wide Web, which was Web1, and the user-generated web, the social media web, Web2. The metaverse, on the other hand, is really shorthand for virtual worlds where users can interact with each other and engage with apps and services in a far more immersive way. The term metaverse first appeared in Neil Stevenson's sci-fi novel Snow Crash where described a virtual reality world. Since then, the concept has gone mainstream through books and movies like Ready Player One and The Matrix. Today, technology is quickly catching up with science fiction. One survey carried out by Ericsson found that seven out of 10 respondents believe that by 2030, they will be able to enter virtual worlds that appear to be completely real. More generally, the metaverse is used to refer to online spaces that strive to create immersive environments. So games like Fortnite, which have been used as venues for virtual concerts, and Roblox, which offers businesses the chance to create branded worlds, can be considered metaverse experiences. So why do people think they are the same thing? Firstly, no one is really entirely sure exactly what either of them are yet. Both are very much under construction by many different people and organizations who all have different ideas about what they will look like when they are finished. For example, Meta, formerly Facebook, said it would spend at least $10 billion developing the concept of the metaverse in 2021. But its vision of what the metaverse will be is very different to those who believe the metaverse should be decentralized and out of the control of big corporations like Meta. Secondly, both the decentralized web or Web3 and the metaverse have been at one point or the other referred to as Web 3.0, a term used simply to state that they represent the third major iteration of the internet. If you Google Web3, you will see that some use Web 3.0 to describe the immersive web, a new generation of the web which is primarily differentiated from what existed previously by its immersiveness, i.e. the metaverse. And thirdly, adding to the confusion is the fact that they cross over in some very important ways. The technology that is used to build Web3, which includes blockchain and blockchain-based cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, and NFTs, unique digital objects that are stored on the blockchain, all have huge implications for the way we will make use of the virtual world in the metaverse for work, play, socializing, and learning. So how do they come together? Perhaps most obviously, cryptocurrencies could form the foundation of the economic and monetary system in the metaverse. If the metaverse is the digital equivalent of the real world, 
then it's pretty likely that people are going to want to shop, earn money and establish businesses there. But what would you want to buy in the metaverse? And would anyone really want to own a digital asset that isn't even real? This is where NFTs or non-fungible tokens come into the picture. Another key element of the Web3 vision are NFTs. Uh, which make it possible for unique items to exist in digital worlds. This is because unlike most of the digital data that makes up the internet, social media and virtual realities, it can't be infinitely replicated just by using copy and paste due to it being represented by a token on an encrypted blockchain. This is why we are already seeing companies like Nike creating NFT-backed shoes and clothing that only exist in the digital world. After all, people spend hundreds of dollars on expensive sneakers in the real world simply because they are limited editions, so why should they behave any differently in the virtual world? Lastly, Web3 offers the possibility to build digital worlds on decentralized platforms. Decentraland, for example, is an entire world built on the Ethereum blockchain. This means that users can use the Ether virtual currency to buy plots of land that belongs to them and not to a corporation that owns the servers where they are stored. This doesn't just mean that they can profit as the land rises in value, just as with real estate, but it means they can set rules about what can and can't happen there. I hope this cleared up some of the confusion around the differences between Web3 and the Metaverse and highlighted the fact that both have the potential to help each other become more than they already are. And that's why there's so much excitement uh, about the ways they can interact. If you want to stay on top of future tech trends and business trends, remember to subscribe to my channel or have a look at my books Business Trends in Practice, Extended Reality in Practice and Tech Trends in Practice.